Good morning, viewers. My name is Imran. I'm a UK and international tax specialist. Once again, I'm here with another interesting video. In this video, I will explain to you how an individual can relieve trading loss in the UK from their trade, how the loss can be effectively utilized against other income in the UK. This video is with illustration and example, which will make it very easy for the viewers to understand this topic and they can do very well in exam and in practice. This video is also useful for the trader who working as a sole trader and they wish to know how they can utilize the loss arises in the trade against other income. I suggest do not skip any part of this video because there is a lot of useful information in this video. Um, also subscribe to my channel because I will be making more interesting video related to UK taxes, financial reporting, financial management, and performance management. But this topic is a highly tested in ACCA, ACA, and CTA exam. Also useful for individual um, currently trading in the UK and they wish to know how they can effectively utilize their trading loss against other income. Also good for accountant when it's come to advising their client in the most tax efficient manner. So this video is with illustration, which will make it very easy for the viewers to understand the concept. Introduction to trading loss. When a sole trader individual make a loss, the trader may then choose how the loss should be relieved by making any appropriate loss relief claim. If there is a continuing trade, the condition is the trade must continue. This allows the trader to use the losses against other income. For example, if you have employment income, property income, even capital gain, I will shoot you with illustration. These losses can also be carried forward under Income Tax Act 2007. Now, current year claim. So it's very important. As a general rule, the losses may be used against net income. Income minus deductible payment give you net income. A trader can utilize trade losses against net income. The losses will be utilized before using personal allowance. Remember this thing. So net income minus current year loss would give you revised net income. And then if any income still left, then you can use personal allowance and that would give you taxable income after utilization of personal allowance. Remember, each individual in the UK is entitled to a personal allowance of 12,570. In this video, I will be showing how to utilize losses against other income. I will not be discussing how to calculate um, your taxable income. I have another video on this. You must visit this video. I wish to know how to calculate income tax in the UK. In this video, I will be explaining only how to relieve trading loss against other income. Now, remember, a trader can set the loss against the net income of the tax year or against the net profit of the previous tax year. So they have a choice. The two claims are independent. So you can make either claim. So you owe both to, uh, together. And a trader could make either or both claim in any order. So there's no order. You can make current year claim or carry back the losses and set against the net profit of the previous uh, year. So partial claim is not permissible. Remember, you need to use the losses to the point that where you wipe off the profit completely. You cannot save the profit to, and set the personal allowance, remember, which means that a taxpayer must either all of the losses, use all of the losses or none. The condition that the business must be run on commercial basis. Alex is a self-employed, there's an illustration. Alex is a self-employed painter and has the following result. So for the year ended 31st March 2022, um, he has a profit of 20,000. For 31st March 2023, he has a trading loss of 15,000. Alex has a property income of 13,000 each year. The person allowance is 12,570 for both year. Advise Alex of the loss relief claims available in the most beneficial way. Remember, if you're a tax advisor, Alex would expect you to give him an advice which will result in having much better tax saving for Alex. So remember, in 2023, Alex has a property income of 13,000. Okay, if he's going to make the current year claim, he will use 13,000 worth losses um, against the property income. He cannot use partial. He need to use the losses to the point where he wipe off completely 
13,000 um, income of the property. So now remember, this 13,000 income is already covered or mostly covered by personal allowance of 12,570. Remember, partial claim is not permissible or the tax legislation does not allow partial claim. If you're going to use this 15,000 worth losses against property income, so you need to pick up minimum 13,000 losses and set against 13,000 rental income. So eventually you need to wipe off completely the rental income. You cannot just wipe a part of the rental income for 2023. You have to wipe it off completely. This is the rules. These are the regulations you need to remember. So we're not going to, we're not advising Alex to make a current year claim. We will advise Alex to carry back this 15,000 losses and set against the profit of the previous years. Now, you will prepare a table like this, trading income, property income, add them up. Uh, for 2021 and uh, 22, there was a trading income of 20,000, property income of 13,000, so the net income is 33,000. For 2022-23, there was a no trading income, there was a loss of 15,000 and the property income of 13,000. Remember, assume if Alex is going to make a current year claim, so it means is he will pick up 13,000 worth losses from the trading loss and set against the property income of 13,000. Um, remember, partial claim is not allowable. You cannot just pick 400 pound uh, worth losses and set against the property income of 2022-23 because the remaining part will be covered by personal allowance. You cannot do this. If you decided to make a current year claim, you need to use enough losses to completely wipe off the profit of 2022-23. That is the rule. That is the tax law. Partial claim is not permissible. As a result, what will happen is he will lose he will lose person allowance um, so we will not advise in this way if alex is going to make a claim and use the losses against 2022-23 he will be left with the 2000 worth losses this 2000 worth losses can be carried back and set against the profit of 2021-22 and eventually the revised profit of 2021-22 will be 31,000. however the person allowance for 2022-23 will be wasted and his revised net income for 2021-22 will be 31,000. However, this is not a beneficial advice for Alex. I will share to you what is the beneficial advice for Alex on the following slide. Remember, partial claim is not permissible. So the best advice for Alex would be is to carry back the losses of 2022-23 and set it against the net income of 2021-22. So after utilize, so what will happen is because the current year profit, the property income of 13,000 is covered by or almost covered by the person allowance. Uh, you cannot use 430 pounds um, against the property income because partial claim is not permissible, as I said to you. You have to utilize the losses to completely wipe off the profit. However, this is not beneficial because Alex will lose person allowance for 2022-23. So the best advice is to carry back this 15,000 losses and set it against the income of 2021 and 22. After that, the revised net income for 2021-22 will be 18,000. He will use his person allowance of 12,570 and that will give him the taxable income. This way, Alex will have much bigger tax saving. Because remember, being a tax advisor, your job is to advise your client in a way that can result in efficient uh, or uh, efficient utilization of losses, and this will have a much bigger tax saving for the client. Now, loss planning, it could be a part of your tax planning question as well. So when it's come to loss planning, we want to use the loss in a way that this generate a bigger tax saving. We aim to set the losses against the income, which is taxed at the higher uh, highest income tax rate. So using the loss against the income tax at 45%, remember an individual will be taxed, depend on his earning, 45%, 40%, and 20%. These are the rate for individual. Here we're discussing the loss relief for individual. So remember, uh, assume in 2022-23, an individual has a trading loss of 100,000 or 200,000, and he has a property income of 40,000, a rental income of 40,000. In the previous year, he has a trading income of 300,000. 
So the best approach for you will be just to carry back the losses because in previous year, he must have paid tax at the rate of 45%, 40%. Because currently in the UK, if you exceed, if your income exceed for individual, exceed income um, above 125,000 or income in excess of 125,000, that will be taxed at the rate of 45%. So the income between 50,000 and 125,000, that will be taxed at the rate of 40% and the income below 50,000 will be taxed at the rate of 20%. So our job is to generate a bigger tax saving for the client. So we need to see the scenario. You need to judge the scenario. See if the carry back, if we decide if we can carry back the losses and see if in previous year he paid the tax at the higher rate, maybe 40% or 45%. So you need to look at that factor as well, then make a decision. We also need to preserve the benefit of using percent allowance. Remember, each individual in the UK is entitled to a percent allowance of 12,000. 570. Remember, we saw in Alex um, illustration number one, the current year claim would have resulted in uh, wasting person allowance for 2022-23. Remember, partial claim is not permissible. If the income is covered by person allowance, we will not be subject to income tax. We know this thing. So there's no point to utilize available losses against the income already covered by person allowance. And finally, Relieving a loss in earlier year leaves more net income available for relieving a loss in the following year. So the, what it means is uh, if you relieve a loss earlier, sometimes in some cases, some of the traders, they are profitable in, in the past. However, in the current situation, due to economic downturn, they could be loss making. So eventually, it's best to relieve the losses in earlier so this will have um, a cash advantage for you. So that's what they're trying to say here. Very important and highly tested. A trader, he may use of the balance of allowable losses for the purpose of capital gain tax under S71. So the net gain less the trading loss, less the capital losses brought forward would give them a revised chargeable gain. Remember, under the loss relief, we can set the losses against the net income of the current year or preceding year, as we see on the previous slide. However, this can also be extended to a capital gain under S71. S64 claim, the current year claim or the carry back must be made before S71. I will show it to you on the following slide with illustration, which will make it very easy for you. When it's come to setting up against the capital gain, there is a restriction. So S71 relief will be lower of the remaining loss after S64 claim. You will make the current year claim or the carry back claim and the relevant maximum, which is the net gain in the tax year, less the capital losses brought forward from the previous year. So I will show it to you with illustration, which will make it very easy for you. Remember that there's annual exempt amount for capital gain. It is possible that S71, as a result of S71, you will lose um, AEA annual, annual exempt amount for capital gain, or uh, currently is be, the government is thinking to reduce it to 6,000. Previously, it was, was 12,300. Our priority will be to use the losses uh, against the capital asset, which are taxed at the higher rate, for example, property business. If you dispose of property in the UK, the capital gain tax rate is 28%, currently reduced to 26%. So we need to use against those assets which are taxed at the higher rate. For example, shares are taxed at the rate of 20%. If there is a business asset disposal relief, then the rate is only 10%. However, our aim is to set these uh, trading laws against those assets which are taxed at the higher rate. Here's the illustration how to use the trading loss against the capital gain. Victoria has a trading loss in the year ended 31st March 2023 of 22,000. She has other income of 9,000. She also disposed an asset made a gain of 26,000. She also disposed another asset made a loss of 3,000. Her brought forward capital losses are 13,000. Victoria will make a claim under S71 for 2022-23. She wished to use the trading loss against the capital gain. Calculate the carry forward amount of the trading loss and the capital loss for Victoria. So remember, before you making S71 claim, you must make S64 claim. So it means use the trading loss of 22,000 
against the net income of 9,000. It means pick up 9,000 worth of losses and set it against other income. So eventually you will lose your person allowance because that 9,000 income is covered by the person allowance of 12,570. But as Victoria wish to make a 71 claim, she will be losing her personal allowance. Now, before making claim under S71 or set the losses against capital gain, you need to make a claim under S64, which is dangerous. So she has the other income of 9,000 under S64 claim. So she will pick up 9,000 worth losses and set against the other income. Eventually, her other income will become zero. So which was already covered by person allowance of 12,570. However, she wished to make a claim under S71. So she will be prepared for this. Now she can extend the claim against um, capital gain under S71. Remember, the relevant maximum will be, so the net gain, remember, on one asset she has a gain of 26,000. On other asset she has a loss of 33,000. So she has a net gain of 23,000 less, uh, as we mentioned on the previous slide. So the relevant maximum amount is, so less the capital loss is brought forward of 13,000. So the relevant maximum amount will be used only will be restricted to 10,000. So eventually, so she has 22,000 trading uh, loss, which 9,000 was set against other income. 10,000 will be set against capital gain. Uh, she will be still left with the 3,000 trading loss, which can be carried forward. So the remaining capital loss will be nil. Now, a trader doesn't have to make a claim under S64. You know, they can just ignore this S64 claim so a carry forward claim they can make. So a carry forward of loss claim can be made under S83. So when a loss is not relieved against other net income or against capital gain, it is not necessary for a trader to make a claim under S64 or under S71 capital gain. So they can simply carry forward the losses and set against the next available trading income. Remember, when it's come to setting it against um, net income of the same year. So you can set it against property income, employment income, or the previous year, you can carry back and set it against the net income. However, when it's come to carry forward, it will be carry forward and set it against trading income. No, um, you cannot um, claim it against property income. You cannot claim it against employment income. It will be only, when it's come to carry forward, it will be carry forward and set against only trading income from the same trade. You have to remember this. Here is illustration number three. Mr. Bull has the following result in the recent year. So three years, 31st March 2023, 31st March 2022, 31st March 2021. So in one year, in 2023, he has a trading income of 30,000 and the rental income of 10,000. In 2022, he has a trade loss of 25,000 and rental income of 10,000. And in 2021, he has a trading income of 5,000 and rental income of 8,000. Look at these figures now. For example, if we're making claim under S64 um, against the current year or S64 previous year, so it's not beneficial based on the figure. If we're going to set um, against the rental income of 2022 because that rental income is already covered by the person allowance. So do not do this. When you're thinking to carry back, so the carry back amount, so remember the, in the previous year, 2021, so you need to focus on this 2022 because there is a loss. Our main focus is the period, uh, the loss making period. Our aim is to effectually utilize this loss to have bigger tax saving for the client. Or even if you're a trader and you don't want to go to an accountant and you can do it by yourself as well. However, it is a bit technical. Um, so then, so we will not suggest Mr. Ball to do, to, to carry back the losses. We will not suggest this. We will not suggest Mr. Ball to use the losses against the current year because the current year 10,000 rental income is covered by the person allowance. The previous year net income of 5,000 and 8,000, 13,000 is covered by, almost covered by person allowance. Remember, partial claim is not permissible. If you're going to carry back, you need to carry back minimum 13,000 to completely wipe off this 13,000 income. 
if you're going to set it against the current year income, you need to minimum use 10,000 worth losses and set it against the rental income. So the best option for Mr. Bull is to carry forward. So carry forward this 25,000 and set it against the 30,000 trading income. So that's the best option for Mr. Bull. Now, the trading income for 2022-23 is 30,000 zero because there was a loss for 2022 and 5,000 for 2021. The property income for 2023 is 10,000 10, for 2021, 22, and 8,000 for 2021. There is no point to carry back the losses from 2021 to 2022-2021 um, to because the income in that period is covered by percent allowance. And there's no point to make the current year claim. So the trader has a property income of 10,000, which is covered by percent allowance. So the best option is to carry back the, uh, sorry, carry forward the losses and set against the trading income from the uh, same trade. Now, in practice, loss relief claim under S64 must be submitted to HMRC. The trader must do so by first anniversary of 31st January following the end of the tax year. For example, if a loss is related to 2021-22, the claim must be submitted by 31st January 2024. For example, if a trader for 2022-23, so the year will end on 5th of April 2023. In the UK, the financial year ends on 5th of April each year. So for 2022-23, the year it will end or already ended um, on 5th of April 2023, then um, the trader must submit the tax return to HMRC by after nine months by 31st January 2024. If he doesn't make a claim when you, when he's submitting the tax return, he still have one more year time. It's here he has a time till 31st January 2025 to amend the tax return and claim uh, or make a claim for any losses. So a carry forward claim is automatic. However, as a general or as a rule, the claim must be made within four years of the end of the tax year in which it relates to. For company, this law does not exist. However, for individual R. Now, Sally has the following result for the following year. So for, 30, for 30th of December, 2021, she has a trading income of 30,000, salary of 10,000. Um, for 2022, 20,000 trading loss and a salary of 12,000. Personal allowance for both years are 12,570. Work out Sally loss relief in efficient manner. So remember, there's no point. Sally can make a claim, uh, for, like, for example, a current year claim. So the current year claim, if she would set uh, 12,000 worth losses against the salary of 12,000 pounds, so this salary of 12,000 pounds for 2022, December 2022, is already covered by her personal allowance. So there is no point to make such claim. So the best option for Sally would be is to carry back the losses and set it against the net income of 40,000. So she can carry back this 20,000 losses and set it against the net income of 40,000. Now, making current year claim, as we discussed on the previous slide, um, would result in wasting person allowance of that because her 12,000 wages or salary has been covered by person allowance. So it will be beneficial to make a claim under S64 carry back. So she can carry back and you can see the result. Uh, she, so she used, she, uh, so look, she utilized the losses efficiently. She still preserved the person allowance by making the previous or carry back the losses to the previous years. You can see that the losses has been carried back. The previous year re revised net income has been reduced to 20,000. And then she has a person allowance for both years. Her taxable income for one year is 7,430. For 2022-23, her taxable income is nil. If she would make a current year claim, eventually she will lose person allowance and she will waste 12,000 worth losses. So there's no benefit of doing this. So it's best to make a carry back claim. Mark has a trade loss of 35,000 for 2022-23. His capital um, gain and loss in the year as follows. So he has a capital uh, so gain on the sales of shares 40,000, loss on the sales of investment property 8,000. So his net gain is 32,040 minus 8. So a simple calculation. Uh, the 
capital loss is brought forward is 8,000. Calculate the loss that could be relieved after making all beneficial claims. But loss under S71 or loss under S71 claim will be lower of available trading loss of 35,000 and the relevant maximum. So the net gain in the year is 32,000. Remember to calculate a relevant maximum. So the net gain min minus the capital loss is brought forward. So the chargeable gain is 24,000. So the claim will be restricted to 24,000. So Sally can utilize only 24,000 worth losses against the capital gain. So that's the general rule. Now, Mr. Smith, a carpenter, has the following trading result. The year end 31st January 2021, 31st January 2022, 31st January 2023. Um, so the results are for three years. Mr. Smith has other income of 12,000 each year. How Mr. Smith can efficiently relieve the losses for the year ended 31st January 2022? We need to focus on the year where there's a loss. We have, so Mr. Smith has a loss of 60,000. Our job is to advise Mr. Smith to effectively utilize those losses against other income so he can have better tax saving. So remember, there's no point to make a current year claim because in current year 2022, focus on the year of the loss first. Okay. So the, in the in the year of the loss, he has other income of 12,000, which is already covered by the person announced. We're not going to uh, advise him to make the current year claim. So our advice will be to, to carry back the losses to the previous year or carry forward. So we will show it to you on the following slide. Now, the hence, uh, Mr. Smith has a trading loss for the year ended 31st January, 2022. Remember, you need to focus on the year where there is a loss. He has another income of 12,000, which is already covered by the person allowance, which is covered by the person allowance of 12,517. So therefore, there's no point in advising Mr. Smith to make a current year claim, as this will result in wasting person allowance. However, carry back the losses under S64 would be worthwhile, as this will reduce the net income to zero. Remember, partial claim is not permissible. You cannot just use 40,000. You need to carry back and wipe off the profit completely. Um, as we cannot preserve personal allowance for 2020-21, after carry back 52,000 worth losses, although there's a loss of 60,000, and the previous year income is 52,000, 40,000 is trading income, and there is other income of 12,000, so 52,000. You cannot just carry back only 40,000 because pre assuming that the rest of the income will be covered by personal allowance. If you're going to carry back, you have to carry back the amount to the level where you can wipe off the profit completely. If there is an amount available, so we can see that we have 60,000 available. So out of 60,000, we can easily carry back 52,000 worth of losses to wipe off the profit. However, as a result, the, the person allowance for the previous year will be wasted. Any money, any loss left, so 60,000 minus 52,000, 8,000 worth of trading loss to be carry forward and set against future trading profit. Remember, uh, when it's come to the carry forward, it can be carry forward and set against trade profit only. You cannot set against other income. You can see from the table, when you're making an exam, this kind of table where there is a carry forward and carry backward, um, then you need to be very careful because when it's come to carry forward, it can be carry forward and set against trading income only. So therefore, you have to create extra row. Okay, so start with the trading income, 40,000, and then nil for 2021-22 because there was a loss of 60,000 and 30,000 for 2022-23. Then we can see that we have other income of 12,000 for each year. Um, then um, we decided to make a claim under, we're not going to make current year claim because the current year is covered by the person allowance. Uh, we carry back the losses uh, under S64. So the previous year income completely wiped off because partial claim is not permissible. 8,000 worth losses which is left and you can see from the second row has been used against the trading income of 2022-23. So that's how and then we don't have any loss remaining. So all the losses has been effectively used. So that's how it's worked in practice. This example I taken from my own tax software. Um, 
that's how it's work in practice so this individual has a property income of 30000 interest income of 9000 so in in exam you will put this property income in the non saving um, income column and the um, interest income in the saving column so this individual also has a trading loss of 20000 and the personal allowance of 12570 so his net income of 39000 minus relief for the trading loss in the same year and also um, he will get a percent allowance so his taxable income will be 6430 which is all saving income and you can see the calculation how it's work out for the saving income if you wish to know how to calculate in uh, tax on the saving income i have uploaded a separate video which explains you in more detail so that's how it's look in practice uh, referring to the previous slide so as I say, is this individual has a, a loss of 20,000, which has been set against other income because we had the rental income and the interest income. You can see in the previous calculation, this 20,000, it's went from there to the previous tax computation. And we, you can see the losses can be set against other income. Losses can be used against capital gain. You can see here, losses can be carried forward and losses can be carried uh, backward and forward. So, and then other CAS deduction on payment from contractor, not relevant to you. Okay, so that's how it's look in practice. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Remember, once you have knowledge, the examiner cannot trick you. You will also perform well in practice too. I want you to make this video short, however, because there's so much information to cover, so much to explain. The main purpose is that is give you the knowledge, is give you the confidence. My aim is to give you confidence and knowledge is that you need for your exam and in practice hence your chances of employability or your chances of uh, passing the exam will be high do not forget to share like and comments also hit the subscribe button because i'll be making more useful video like this to benefit you now it's time to uh, say uh, or time to wish you a very pleasant day